Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationship from from surviving surviving to to thriving. thriving. Be sure to listen to the podcast all the way to the end. Our guest has an amazing giveaway for you today. If this is your first time joining us, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. Today on TMC, we have Brandon Miller with Amazing Parenting. having me, Cedric and Shante. I come to you from California, up in the northern parts of Sacramento, and I have been married to my lovely wife, Anna Lynn, for 28 years. Wow. And we have seven children, and they uh, range in age. The oldest is 27. The youngest is 11, and uh, they are all ours, all single births, so we're often asked if we're Catholic or Mormon. We playfully (laughs) say, no, no, we're we're neither one of those. We just <laughs> love each other a lot, and kids just came with the story. So that's been uh, that's been the journey. Uh, she is uh, born in the Philippines, immigrated to the United States when she was three years old, and so has that cool immigrant story. And so our children are mixed race, and we just really enjoy uh, all that that brings in, in so many ways. So we just love uh, this this amazing family. So we have. Uh, really uh, beautiful children with dark feet years and we have a child with uh, porcelain skin and green eyes and their sisters a year apart you would never know they were siblings wow. so we have just this amazing wow. mix of children um, and, and it, we didn't plan it this way but we have three that are in their 20s they're married they have children so we have four grandchildren awesome. and in the, ne- in the next week from this recording we'll have two more so we're just about to go to six grandchildren oh, wow. congratulations wow. kind of a funny story so they so our daughter is having her second daughter and she used a family vacation to plan like the great reveal and tell us all hey i'm having a baby my number two and we all celebrated and later that evening we were back in a one of the places we were staying and our daughter-in-law who currently has two boys with our son comes in with this look of shock holding a pregnancy <laughs> test saying, and I'm having my third one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. they actually have the exact same due date, which oh think about the chances of that happening. Whoa. The same due date. So um, my son and his wife are having their third son, my daughter and her husband, second daughter. And then I have another older daughter. Now between them, there's eight years and then we have 18, 17, 14, and 11. So we've got like two different generations we've been raising. Yes. Wow, that is awesome. Yes, that is amazing. Seven children. I mean, on the first child, you know, you're raising the first time parents and you're, you, you made a few mistakes. And then on the second, you know, you, you, you learn from the first and you made a little less mistakes. And then on the third, you made and, and so on and so forth. And most people, you know, have maybe a second chance, third chance, some maybe five or seven. Five. I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty amazing. You know, seven times, seven times completion to get this thing right. So I want to go back. Let's go back to child number one. And let me ask you this question. The, the oldest okay, of yes. the siblings, the very first, your very first love, the one you first fell in love with. What do you know now that you wish you would have knew then? Annalyn and I found out we were with child at 17 and 16. Wow. So I was 17, Annalyn was 16, found out one fateful day in high school that, mm. uh, oh boy, life just advanced yeah. several years. And uh, we made the decision, it took some months, but we made the decision that we were going to stay together, raise the child together. And then uh, we are Christians as well. And it became very clear to me uh, that God had an other, a different plan than my designs to play college football and pursue that path. It was, I'm to get married and raise this this child and best decision we ever made. And so we were married in August and Bailey was born one month later in September. So we like to joke with her that she was at the wedding. She got to celebrate with us, (laughs) but you can imagine 17 and 16 and then 18 and 17. When we had her, there was so much to learn. There was so much to understand. And 
and, and here's what I believe, you're ready to be parents when you become parents. That I, I believe that it is written in our hearts, that God, it is in our design, that when you engage, that I am now responsible for a life, yeah. you're ready. And, and we, thank God, took that very serious and began down that path. However, I will tell you, with our oldest, and, and I, I have to add the second one, because we had our son one year and six days later. Wow. Wow. So we had two children, boom, boom. So we barely had enough time to screw up the first one before the second one showed up. <laughs> so, so then it was really the, the two sons. So it was Bailey and Lance, our oldest son and daughter. And a big part of what we write about in, in our first book and our story to tell people is we spent so much time concerned about what others thought about us as parents, that we saw our children as a reflection of what would make us look good or not look good. And so we parented to the voice of others wow. instead of parenting to what these children uniquely needed from us. Wow. And, and I have since had occasion to apologize to our children for this younger and older, now that they're older to say that was, was us being immature. That was us following the way of the world, which says, these other voices should decide for us as the primary people responsible for your well-being. Uh, we listen to too many outside influences. Uh, and what it led to is we were comparing ourselves. So we were, I was trying to take a little bit of this parent, a little bit of that parent and our parents. And we realized this is frustrating. Uh, we can't do it. We can't get them to perform like those kids, those kids, those kids. Uh, so that's, we learned that parent to our authentic self and raise these children to who God created them to be, not what the world was telling us they're supposed to be. Wow, that that is a lesson. That, that, that is, is a lesson. lesson. And that's awesome because when you said that, I think about myself and there has definitely been those times when it's like, you represent me. You can't go to the school looking like yeah. that, acting like that because yeah. then people are gonna think, and we don't ever say it to the kids, but people are gonna think I'm a bad parent. And yeah. what right. we're doing is comparing their kids don't act like that. And that is something that we oftentimes don't think about. And you said to parent the child into who God created them to be. And a lot of us as parents, we're, we're parenting into who we want them to be yeah. instead of who God created them. Yeah. Explain to us, why is that important? Mm. Yeah, I'll say this, that, you know, the Bible talks about raise a child in the way he or she should go. Yeah. And when they're older, they'll not depart from it. So as parents, we interpret that to mean raise a child in the way that, that I up. think they should yeah. go. Right? I, I, I should know how this should go instead of the way they're designed, the way that they're, they're built, the way that they have a destiny, a plan, and a future. Mm. And so in, in another passage, it talks about God giving us insight into how he sees children, right? So he talks about in the womb, I, I knit you together in your mother's womb, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. So a child has a destiny, they have a plan. Yeah. So if I'm a believer or not, I can trust that there is an intelligent design somewhere going on here. Yeah. And, and what we learned is it's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be a mystery. That if I learn to understand this child, the importance of that is then I can begin to engage my child in um, who their unique personality is. So Bailey and Lance, very different personalities. Bailey was really shy. She was our child that that required encouragement just to go meet new friends and just took time. And that shy girl, um, we we were we'd be a little embarrassed by that and come to realize, wow, that was that was wrong. Why 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 are we uh, upset that that she she happens to be an introvert. Yeah. She happens to have two extroverted parents, <laughs> so she's an introvert. Why is that wrong? Why is that? Why? What's? There's nothing wrong with being a thoughtful person. There's nothing wrong with being a little more quiet first, talking to later. You know, the world needs better listeners, in my Absolutely. opinion. Yes. <laughs> and, Absolutely. And she, right, she does good. Now, we're Lance. Lance was the kid that liked to tear everything apart. You give Lance a toy, he had more fun breaking it down than building it back up. Right. And so he constantly tinkered and, you know, he was the kid sticking stuff in light sockets just to see what would happen. He was the kid, you know, deconstructing. And instead of saying, wow, what is, what's going on with this kid? You know, why are they breaking things? What, what's this? It was learning later to clue into the man he is today. He's an electrician and he fixes things. Wow. And he, he knows and he look and that, 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 that hard wiring was present when he was a little guy and, 
uh, we, we learned to validate and appreciate as they got older and we made a shift, but it took some time to get there. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was at a baby dedication once. It was a young man that had I, I'd met him in church, and he was just starting his family. And so he was the first person I ever heard take that idea. And he said, he said, I think what this means is that there's a way to raise this child in the way this child is designed to go, not the way I think or or how I should perceive. And it was the first time it really struck me of wow, I've been getting that wrong. <laughs> Well, I, 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 and it, and it challenged me to dig in and it challenged me to think differently. And it happened to coincide with a path that Annalyn and I were on where we were, we were challenged by a book we read and the book was titled now discover your strengths. Mm. And the whole premise of the book was every human being has written in their source code genius. And actually in the book, it says, and this is not a faith-based book, but it says right in there, God given strengths. I've heard some people in the in the ministry refer to that as common grace. So every person has written into their source code genius potential. Yeah. So the job of, and, and in this case, the book was talking to employers, is to pull it out of them. And, mm-hmm. and the whole challenge of you will get more from your employees, your managers, your salespeople, if you play to those strengths than you ever will trying to turn them into something else. And it was like the two the two lines of thinking from what we've learned from scripture and, you know, just this, this really cool way to frame it and something we all understand. We all understand a person's strengths and go, boom, there it is. Like now, how would I apply that to the role of being a parent? How would I shift my way of thinking and to my marriage? How would I think differently about how we're, we're wired and set up to be? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you're talking about strengths and playing on their strengths and pulling out their strengths which leads to something that I want us to talk about. You and your wife wrote a book, Play It to Their Strength. Mm. And this is a parenting book. Uh So you just told us how you guys took this this business, this entrepreneur type things for helping people develop people within their companies and compiled it with this scripture, train up a child in the way they should go, compiled it together to create this book for parents. So tell us a little bit about this playing to their strengths for a parent. So we tell uh, people we talk to be careful when you start a hobby with your spouse, (laughs) (laughs) because it can grow into all kinds of things. And as parents of seven, my wife and I own businesses. So we there's a lot of times where we're just passing, right? You know, we're passing in the house and how was your day? How was your day? What's this? And we, we had decided some years back, what could we do together? Where, where, would, where would God have us serve together? Where would we start to just be able to form some bonding around an area that we wanted to focus? So it was her birthday. It was a January, 2017. And we went away and we said, all right, well, of all the things we could do, what has it been on our heart? And a book came to the surface. And we said, of the books we would write, what topic do we enjoy? We both agreed. Well, parenting and and we laughed because we said we could write a really good book about what not to do <laughs> <laughs> like if seven kids teaches you something it's a good book of what not to do uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot uh, yeah. and then because of our mutual journey down this path of strengths and the fact that we had made a very serious transition right around 2008 2009 to turn our home into a strengths-based home that we were much more interested in what was right with our kids than what was wrong with them. We were much more interested in, in what, what made their eyes shine than what brought them down. We were more interested in talking about the A's on their report card than the C's. Yeah. We, we really, and it was not an easy turn. It took time. It's still a, a, a journey. But when we caught on to this concept, we went away and we, we just outlined this whole book in, in like a weekend. We really felt the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We just felt like, wow. This is just coming together. We reached out to a friend that happened to be a great writer about helping us be a ghostwriter and said, maybe, maybe you can help us. You know, maybe you're on the book, maybe you're not. We'll, we'll work together, get a few chapters, and then see if, if a door opens for a publisher. So we got our first three chapters. Well, as part of my business at the time, I would travel around and speak to groups of CEOs. And I get this opportunity to speak to a room of CEOs in Eugene, Oregon. And in the room is the CEO of a publishing company. Oh, and wow. while I'm in the room and I'm sharing the, the, the normal talk I give, which almost always included my kids, at the end of the talk at lunch, he slides his business card across the table and says, um, I heard you were doing a book. 
I want you to send it to me. I'd like to take a look at your book. And so that's how the book started. And I'll tell you both, I found out later, you cannot get into this publishing company without an invitation or an agent. So the fact that it came from the CEO almost immediately locked it in that we were going to get a book deal. So two book deals later, and it just was amazing the the journey we've been on and and this opportunity. It's amazing. You know what? This is awesome. And when you just shared what happened when you guys wrote this book and how God connected you in Eugene, Oregon with a CEO of a publishing company, it goes all the way back to where we're talking about God knew what he put in you from the very beginning Absolutely. before the foundation of the world. He already knew this was going to be your path. And this day was lined up for you to meet this CEO. So you didn't have to jump through all these hoops so that you can get to create this great, awesome book to help other parents. I'm just, it is just connecting to me because you're saying the thing about, same thing about our children. And if we just focus on their strengths and what's good about them, the same thing you said about your son, he's an electrician. Those things that are already in us from when God created us, those things flourish and come out. And then God is just strategically lining up the time and the space for it to connect and take you to where you need to be. And I'm like, wow, this is definitely God ordained for this book to be given to parents to to start this book you're like put in a place where you never would have met this person, yeah. maybe never would have been able to connect with this company yeah. and right. to change the lives of so many. Because what we've talked about just here, just now is made my antennas go up like, oh, wow. Yeah. What are we doing as parents? How often, when you said to pay more attention to what is good about them instead of what's wrong, pay more attention about the A's instead of the C's or the D's, because as parents, it's sometimes, and I can say this for myself, I actually told someone this, sometimes my focus is, why do you have this C? Why do you have right. this C? I know you could do better than this. And instead of celebrating that you have three Bs and two As on the report card. That's right, that's that, right. That is, all of this is just, it's just awesome. And yeah. it's definitely opening up something for me. So, so there's studies out there that tell us that the average parent will spend 80 to 90% of their time talking about the lower grades, okay? 10 to 20 talking about the A's. Okay, so essentially teaching a child, your path to success will flow through fixing what's wrong with you, Mm. not Uh knowing what's right with you. So so children are taught at a very young age, so think of like programming years. Your path to success is to fix yourself, right? Mm. So when we simply go, okay, well, what if we said there's nothing wrong with fixing the C, but what if we put it in proportion? We said, why don't we spend 80% of the time not only celebrating the A, but building on the A and good to great is the right term. Let's build on that. Let's, let's, let's explore further. So here's what comes. This is what research tells us. A child that is in their area of strengths grows in three key areas. One, they increase in confidence. Mm-hmm. They, they just feel like I can do more. I can take more risks. I can I, um, I can become more resilient. I can bounce back better because I, I have this confidence that I have what it takes to do good at these areas, right? Number two, they increase in competence so they can learn more. We've actually taken the ceiling off. Or it's, we have more room to work. And then third, this is fun. Children become more creative. Mm-hmm. And creative just simply means there's more parts of their brain that, that can flower okay. and we can explore. So I have yet to meet a parent that would not vote yes on all three of those. Right. I have every parent I've ever met says, I, I want my kid to have that. I want my kid more confident, more creative. I want them more competent. And so I'll, I'll, share, I'll share how it can go. Our youngest, Daniel, he's 11. He had the hardest time in reading, okay? And uh, so we didn't, we didn't make it a huge deal, but we reading's important. <laughs> he yeah. needs to read in life. Right. And, and we, we found creative ways to play to Daniel's strengths. So Daniel, of all seven of our children, is hands down the most competitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, and this kid, there's, there's research out there that says the youngest kids in the family, because of what they call mirroring neurons, actually are the most talented athletically uh, because they, they pick up uh, motor skills faster because they're watching their older siblings, right? Mm-hmm. So he's our, he's our guy. 
This kid has been the MVP on every sports team he's ever bet on, including his football team, starting quarterback. I mean, just amazing athlete. So a year ago during the pandemic, we found a company that did uh, reading tutoring, but in a way I'd never seen. They gamified it. So the game works where they assess your child's reading skill. And he was in fifth grade reading at second grade level. They assess and then they make it to where he gets onto a Zoom call and then they quickly show him flashcards and he gets points as he gets the flashcards. And then those same words are in a paragraph. So he repeats this. So he did this twice a week for the course of about nine months. In nine months, Daniel went from second grade reading level to eighth grade reading level. Oh my God. In that period of time. Because because Daniel didn't have a a, a deficiency. He had an attention challenge. Mm -hmm. Reading would board him. Once we found a way to tap into his natural nature, his competitive nature, he loved those calls. He loved being on there, loved the thrill, loved his teacher. She was a wonderful young college lady in, in Florida that worked for this company. That's that's the difference. But we, we didn't ever make him feel bad, wrong. You're not here. So now with, with growth, maturity, motor skills, he's now, we've seen great outcomes from it. Oh my goodness. Wow. I mean, you are unlocking doors for me. You are definitely blowing my mind because what you're saying is very simple, but we don't think about it. We don't think about it. We Uh don't think about how we're putting things in contents. If I went all the way back to, I wrote down when you said, if I'm focusing on whatever we see as a deficiency, I'm saying something, fix something is wrong with you. Instead of figuring out what works best for you, which is what you guys did with your son, yeah. like this, he's competitive. So to get these points, he going all in. And then that starts that creativity. Now a whole nother part of his brain is working and increasing his reading level all the time while it's still playing to something that he has strength in his competitive. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and I love it because, I mean, you really think about it. I mean, it's not only increased the creativity in the child, but the parents are more creative exactly. in finding ways. And I mean, finding- Brandon, what you just did, you basically told, you basically told me uh, some of the things I've been doing as a parent, I've been lazy. I've been doing lazy parenting because if it don't look like I think it should look, I get lazy and I just want to Things fight again, just try you, to yeah. fix that. And it's like, it's not, oh my goodness. Yeah. Man, man yeah. why, why, where, where were you, where were you 20 years ago? Where well, I was, I was making, making my own lazy mistakes. That's what I was doing. <laughs> but this is, this is so awesome to come just, I mean, it's just so awesome for everybody to hear. So I want to share something really important, really important for your listeners. And it's this, I've shared this message in many settings. So from religious settings to non to corporate. And what typically happens is a listener will start to hear with a tinge of regret. I could have done something different. Mm -hmm. And here's what we offer them. It is never too late for a duo. Yeah. It's never too late to go to that adult child saying, you know what? I might've missed a few things. Because the two most important words that a child or an adult child will ever hear from their parents is, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. and, and, I, and, and I'm wrong. And it's okay to acknowledge that and say, but I noticed this great thing about you, or I see this in you, because, because our kids are wired biologically for their entire life to want our approval. They can't escape it. They want it. So even if they try to push it off, just give it to them and watch the gravy melt on the potatoes. I mean, it just... It's just, oh, it, it just feels right to them. Oh, and it's never late for that do-over. And we've heard testimonies from people, again, faith or not, to say, wow, I have a whole new relationship with my child or my adult or this. And it's, uh, that, that's a really important part of this message. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because wow. as long as both are still living, you have the opportunity to do it different, wow. to do a different point forward. Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> So we felt like the first book we wrote did a really great job addressing parent to kid, mm-hmm. but we, we felt like we were leaving the parents out. And mm-hmm. so there's this chapter in the book where we take them on a journey of the Disney movie. It's called The Incredibles. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with that? Okay. So the family of superheroes, right? And we talk about one of the heroes, it's Mr. Incredible, who's working as an insurance person and, and just languishing, just obviously not doing what he was made to do. 
and how he and Frozone are out moonlighting because they want to like really we're heroes, but during the day we got to pretend like we're these insurance salespeople or whatever, right? Yeah. So we just talk about the fact that a lot of parents struggle with with what psychologists refer to as the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's a fear of being found out that I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. And and oh my gosh, don't let anyone find out that I don't know what I'm doing. So I got to fake it till I make it. I hate that phrase, by the way, <laughs> like that just because it, it sounds so disingenuous. So, so we wrote our second book titled Incredible Parent. And, and we don't make the book about the movies. It's really about you have as a parent what it takes to be a great parent. You just might not be looking in the right places mm. because as a parent, if you're spending more time looking at what you're not doing as a parent, mm -hmm. right? It's talking about social media. Why can't I be more like that Instagram parent? <laughs> Why mm -hmm. can't I be more like those? Let's talk about church. Why can't my kids be more well-behaved like yeah. those kids? Oh, yeah. Man. Why can't I be the one doing the cool parties like that parent? Why, wherever parent, PTA, sports, pick any place you want where parents congregate, comparison is natural. Mm -hmm. So the message we simply offer is let go of comparison. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out who you are as a parent we provide a simple assessment in there, a 10 minute assessment to learn some parenting strengths. And we, we, we partnered with our friend, Dr. Ryan Darby to build a, it's literally a 10 minute quick assessment just to learn what do I do good as a parent? Yeah. And then just some insights into it. Let's help you do that more of the time and see if we can increase your confidence, your creativity, your competence in your parenting role. This is oh, awesome. Man. I, I can't say anything except for this is awesome. Yeah. It's awesome and it's free to the parent, especially I'm I'm excited for those that are not yet parents who are able to get this information because they have the opportunity to have that little foot ahead. And then for those of us that are looking for that do-over, we still have this information to apply to move forward. So I, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Incredible family. And yes. family the incredible company family. yes yes explain that to us what is incredible family so dr ryan darby who i just mentioned who uh helped us build the assessment so dr ryan was um a a scientist within the gallup organization and they they they're a leader in the realm of strengths-based development uh, primarily in the workplace but they work in schools and they certainly have a parenting leg when he left, we partnered to build this and we, we thought about, gosh, what, what would it look like if there was a business that was dedicated to supporting parents in the workplace? Mm -hmm. And, and when, we, when, we, when we did our research and we thought about supporting working parents and what's unique about being a working parent and why, why did the pandemic expose something so obvious? It's always been there. It just brought it to the surface to say, if you don't support your parents, and I'm just, you know, no offense, Cedric, but why do moms suffer more than dads in the workplace? They, they actually have a name for it. It's called the motherhood penalty. Mm -hmm. Why do they suffer? Because organizations don't know how to support them. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, hey, if you go have kids, we'll see you in a while because you probably can't handle this promotion. You probably can't handle this opportunity. What if organizations realize they are some of our most valuable people yeah. and they work, they're going to work harder because by percentage, they already do work harder Absolutely. than most of your workers will ever work. Absolutely. Sorry, dad. Sorry, Absolutely. dad's not that, but come on. Who's running the <laughs> we gotta admit it. We got to admit the truth. Let's be real. Let's it's be really fact. real. Look at the stats. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's a fact. We spend our time inside of large companies, government agencies. We provide coaching for managers and, and human resource directors to know how to meet this need, we provide uh, coaching cohorts where people can join, just parents can join. And when we define parent inside of a workplace, we're not trying to label that it's biological, mm -hmm. could be foster, yeah. could be this, could be with your partner, could, whatever it is, parenting. You have the sacred relationship of being responsible for a child, you count. <laughs> you count. Like we, we want to support you. And, and what we're learning is that it, there is a growing interest because of the need associated with um, every workplace that you could talk to in America right now will tell you number one problem is staffing mm -hmm. and number two problem is retaining staff. And so if, if you don't solve this, it's not like there's 10 people lined up for that job. It's a buyer's market. People can really be selective and someone's going to pay them more money. So better not, 
you better not be making money your hook, mm-hmm. but it ought to be your hook. And if one third, at least one third of the workforce are parents in the zero to 18 phase, one third. Mm-hmm. So I, we like to ask how many of you can afford one third of your workforce to be thinking about leaving you because you're not supporting them, especially right, right now, now with everything swirling. So that's what Incredible Families mission is, is to support working parents and the people who are dedicated to being their their leaders wow this is oh, awesome talking about flipping this is definitely flipping the trajectory or the ideas that we've always had about how we do things yeah that it's it's been rewarding that company i don't get to spend a lot of hands on in because i have a another business that i do more of the the workplace stuff that uh mm-hmm. Happens uh, where we do strength, we develop strength based cultures inside mm-hmm. of companies. Uh, but I would say I'm so passionate about that one. I love to, I'm CEO of both. That one, I love to help architect what we're going to do. And I'll tell you, it's, it's been a lot of fun um, hearing the stories. So, really quick, we I had occasion this week to talk to a mom, um, did an exit survey. And so, this is a mom with a three year old and a seven month old. And it's an exit survey. So, she was leaving her company. And when I asked her, what's the number one reason why you're leaving? She said, because they called and told me I have to come back to the office. She said, I have little ones. I, I'm not wanting to expose them to the virus. I'm not wanting to take that risk. They're not giving me an option. She said, it's number one. Number two is I, once I started looking, I found I get more money. I'm like, well, not surprising. Yeah. Someone's offering more money right now, anywhere right. you look. Yeah. So she found more money. So that quickly became, well, thank you. And they're going to let me work from home. Uh-huh. So when I went back to the leadership to tell them, this reality, they just went, oh my, that's not our message. We want to know they have options. I said, well, that didn't make it to her boss. <laughs> her mm-hmm. boss didn't get it. And you're responsible to make sure your managers are giving your right message. Oh. So second case, this was literally in the span of two days this happened. Wow. Next conversation, I get a call from a senior manager in a government agency, government, mind you, okay? They are not known for being great managers. <laughs> um, <laughs> those are known as tough workplaces. Right. Absolutely. Government manager calls and says, I have a team member. She has a 10-year-old. He got in trouble at school. He never gets in trouble. She is just stressed out. She's upset, single mom. I know we have resources. Who can I connect her with? Mm-hmm. Got her the connection to, to the parenting coach got it over to her. She was so thankful that I have someone for her to talk to. We're going to be able to provide that support. Within two days, this organization is going to see that person retain, sustain, feel supported. This one, they lost them. And that's why this company is existing. Wow. Wow. Before we go, before we go, I want to ask you, because you have a company that helps support parents, when a parent comes to you and they Say they find themselves in where we've been talking, that I've been more of the parent focusing on the bad and let's fix what's wrong with you. But I've heard what Brandon said. I've read your book and now I want to have the first ideas of where can I start? Mm-hmm. Let's give the parents some practical ways that they can start being a little bit more intentional Mm. about leading your child based on their strengths. Mm. That's great. So in the, in our book, play to their strengths, we talk about the relationship between frustration with your child compared to fascination with their personality, their strengths, what you're seeing. Mm. And you can almost think of it like a ratio. So when I find myself frustrated with what my child is doing, I can get fascinated with the who and the what behind what they're doing. So it's a, it's a simple shift to, okay, I see this child acting out. Let's use toddlers. Every toddler is going to tantrum. Mm-hmm. If you think you're going to escape it, I'm sorry to tell you I'm seven for seven. They're all going to do it. Okay? <laughs> and it's actually an important part of their development because it's as they start to interface with their world, they have to become more autonomous. You don't want them dependent like the nursing child. You need them to start interfacing with the world. They just don't like the word no. (laughs) (laughs) We like to say that every child comes into the world with two questions. Question one is, do you love me? Which all of us who are parents would go, of course I do. Mm -hmm. Question two is, will you let me do anything I want to do? (laughs) And so if I'm going to answer no to the second one because of the first one, you got to know the second one's going to come with some complications. Uh They're not going to like being told no. Well, 
watching that child tantrum, you can pay attention. What is it that they tantrum over? What is it that they seem to be drawn to? You could keep a note of that. Oh, it might be when they're tired. Oh, it looks like when they're hungry. I'm taking them out at the wrong time. There's probably a reason or a trigger to why it's happening. And so if I stay curious and I ask questions, then I can even begin to go, hmm, what am I noticing about their personality? Mm -hmm. Does it happen when they're around large groups? Does that stress them out? Mm -hmm. Does it happen around strangers? Does that make them nervous? Or do they love strangers? Do they love large groups? Do they seem to light up there? Uh, That's curiosity around what am I seeing? And and we could just call it being a student to your children and staying in discovery mode. Wow. 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 I love it. I love it. I said, I, I said that was one question, but I have another one. Yeah, let's do it. This one, this one, this is this i guess i'm being a little selfish but it's gonna help some other ones too because we have teenagers so Uh, when you guys started (laughs) when you guys started focusing on strength-based parenting how old were your children then our oldest was 17 okay so 17 16 and oh she was 13 we like to tell parents, our children, the Miller children, we're five for five on this right now. I'll see how number six does. My children all choose to lose their mind at 15. 15 is the year they go off the rails and do something that we go, wow. <laughs> we actually have a fun rule in my house. Here's my rule. I tell my children, you can tell me anything you want about what you've done that you don't think you should have. And I will even give you a space where I say, hey, all the all y'all come free. Like you can tell me anything and you will have zero consequences. I just want to be able to talk to you. However, if you lie to me in the midst of this conversation, wow. then you get consequences. And here's the consequences. Oh, wow. You're twice. And so at 15, they all take the unfortunate path. And then we prove to them, okay, you wouldn't have had, here's mm-hmm. these. And then it's amazing. 16, they start to open up and they start to share. Dad, I thought this. Dad, I went and did that. Dad, mom, we went and did this. Great. Thank you. Let's learn from it. No consequences. Wow. Really? Wow. No, because it's the, this isn't a game of cat and mouse. I don't want to chase you. I don't want to try to find you being bad. I already know you're going to be bad. I already, <laughs> know you're gonna do, I already know you're going to do stuff that I don't want you to do that God doesn't want you to do because you live in the world and you have friends wow. and people... And you're going to experiment and want to go, I just am hoping to keep you safe (laughs) and grounded in in our faith and grounded in your future. Mm -hmm. So let's relate that way. And I'll tell you, um, it has helped tremendously. That and and just no one, remember I said it too, so young, you know, even as teenagers start to learn, oh, this is what lights you up. This is what triggers you. So it really helpful way that we've learned to engage with them when they get to their teen years. Wow. And you, I mean, Brandon, you just answered my question without me asking it because it's like, wow, what I was, my question was going to be like, how did you guys make that shift? And what is the thing that made that shift happen with the teenage, but you just told us like actually giving them that you can tell me anything you can tell well, me anything. And let's make- like, like, let's list the big ones, right? So okay. premarital, premarital sex. Yeah. We've been there. Mm -hmm. Um, using drugs. Yep. We've been there. Abusing Mm -hmm. alcohol. Yep. We've been there. Cutting themselves, hurting themselves. Yep. We've been there. Mm -hmm. Um, stealing. Yep. We've been there. Lying, cheating, getting suspended, fighting. Yep. 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 Like there's a pretty definitive list of all the things your kid could probably do that you don't want them to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And as parents, if we accept that, huh? So they come from me. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. So when I was that age, what did I do? Because it probably uh, won't be that far uh, <laughs> from what I, now I may be trying to teach them different and trying to grow them and learn from my experience. But should I really be shocked uh, when they wow. do something that kids <laughs> can do? And I think when you get over the shock factor of not my child, then you actually set them up for more realistic expectations. Because what I tell parents is they're doing it anyway. You just, they just, they just have learned lying as their native They're language. Hide it from wow. you, yeah. Yes, yeah. and if you could, if you could get the lying out of the way to, hey, it doesn't mean I'm condoning yeah. things that we yeah. we don't want or the Bible doesn't want or clearly society <laughs> doesn't want. Right. Like, like you know, I'm not condoning. Yeah. I want you to be a good citizen, but some of their learning has to be consequential learning, mm. and some of that learning you can't give them. 
they yeah. have they, they, there's experiences that they must go through and we're there hopefully because this is something we say in our book i am not raising kids i'm raising future adults who i hope to have a relationship with when they're older and they want to come back and talk to me mm-hmm. about what happens now in their marriage and raising kids and what do you think of this dad and how about how do i manage my money what do you think of this investment that's that to me is a definition of successful parenting yeah. is you get to stay in the game even when they've moved on from your home wow so here's here's what i'm going to propose and we are passionate about getting our book play to their strengths in front of people and so what I want to put out to your listeners is that if they would like a copy of the book, we will provide you with a number of copies. And anyone who wants to reach out and engage with you, whether on your email list or support you, we will provide them a complimentary copy. Wow. And they, they wow. can have that. Um, the book comes with a playbook. So you read a chapter and it gives you some action steps. And that way it complements what they're learning today. And, and we feel like we all got to complete a meal. And it's for my wife and I, this is as much ministry for us as it is, you know, what we, what we do with incredible family, with incredible parent, but the play to their strengths, that book, we love to support people who are supporting families with. So for you and your listeners, I'm happy to share that. Wow. That wow. is awesome. Wow, Brandon, thank you so much. Brandon, if someone wanted to connect with you and what are you doing, where should they go? So we have a website for my wife and I, it's annalynbrandon.com. So A-N-A-L-Y-N and then Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N.com. Annalynbrandon.com, they can send us a message. They can take uh, the parenting strength assessment. There's a free version on there if they want to learn their strengths. They can look at, you know, if they want to buy any of the parenting resources they can. Uh, but really it's a great way just to connect in and if they sign up for the regular blog once a month some insight comes out like this recording will go out to that group so that 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 goes out if they want to learn more about some of just the resources we're producing if you enjoyed this amazing life-changing information that brandon shared here with us today and you would like to receive your free copy of play it to their strength email us at admin at lee to number two greatness.com this is awesome oh man on behalf of the tmc community we want to thank you so 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 very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all my pleasure thank you for having me absolutely thank we hope you. that you enjoyed this video and if you did go ahead like comment and subscribe And if you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. We want to invite you to head on over to our leadership podcast, Lead to Greatness, where my husband is interviewing entrepreneurs and great leaders every week. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationship from From surviving surviving to to thriving. thriving. Bye. Bye. See See you next week. week.